So it's a, always a difficult uh, thing to take when you've been rejected. Take it on the chin. We all get rejected. I've been rejected many times. If your paper's been rejected by a journal, then don't despair. Uh, you're entitled to feel angry for a day, and then you've got to become constructive. It's, it's okay, every paper gets rejected. Just take a break, and I would say sleep on it for like two days. Just don't worry about it. Then your supervisors are there to help you out. Yes, definitely. I was rejected for, for a conference paper. Uh, but it wasn't a good experience, but it was a good lesson to start early. If the paper is truly excellent and is perfectly edited, it is possible that it could be accepted without change. This is very rare, very rare. I would say maybe between 2 and 5% of the papers might get that. If I look at my own career, I've learned more through rejection than I have through an acceptance of a paper. So it's a great opportunity to reflect on that science, to reflect on, on the work and to learn as much as you can. So my last first author paper which was accepted, we submitted it and then we waited for one month and got a response with that the paper could be published after major revisions. You know, I accept them as constructive feedback, you, uh, do the consultation with your team and see where are the insights that you can take and you know what are the takes out of those reviews. But there is a lot of gold actually in reviews that can help you to improve your paper. But you can't you can't rebut uh, the reviewer's comments. Uh, you can't write an angry letter to the editor and say that the reviewer D is an idiot. Uh, that's just not going to get you anywhere. Uh, so you just need to, to calm down, relax, be be constructive, improve the paper and find another home for it. So I think follow that advice, even if it might hurt, and even at first, the first time you read it, you think they're wrong. <laughs> Go away, have a walk, <laughs> or step away from the paper for a couple of weeks, because inevitably you go back and you read it and you think, well, yeah, there's some truth to this. So it was very strange to see 16 reviewers, but the thing is that I could satisfy all 16 reviewers after five rounds of revisions, which took more than a year, and finally my paper got accepted. So the very first paper which I did for my PhD that was rejected, uh, but it was uh, a good set of feedback which we received from that paper. Uh, it was good that we were kind of prepared, uh, as in like if, we, if the paper were to be rejected, then we had a plan in mind. Uh, the plan was to resubmit it to some other paper by making all the changes which have been recommended uh, for the first uh, uh, for the first decision, which meant for me, I went back to the lab. I did additional experiments that the reviewer suggested. Once I had done them and I included the, the results in the manuscript, we submitted again. And after a little process, the paper was then accepted for publication. Some of my best work was rejected more than once before it finally succeeded. And it, it, you know, ultimately, I, I have examples of papers that were published in top tiers. So you can learn from this process. Your rejection, the rejection doesn't mean the work isn't, doesn't have potential necessarily. It, it may mean it was premature. It may mean that the fit wasn't there. It may mean you were unfortunate and got reviewers on a bad day. There's, there's some things I can fix up and I've given the wrong impression to this reviewer and how do I fix that writing? How do I improve my communication? So it's a great learning opportunity to have a paper rejected.